We've named further strike action because at this point in time, we don't have a pay offer that settles our members' demands in Network Rail. And we have no offer at all in the 14 other companies we're in dispute with. And at the same time, all of the places that we're making deals are in all of the companies that are not controlled by the DFT. So we're achieving settlements in Merseyside, in Scotland, in Wales, uh, in London Underground, Docklands Light Railway, the Eurostar. We're all achieving reasonable deals there. Uh, but where the DFT is in control, we're not making progress. And so that's why we've had to name further strike action, really demanded by our members. They're furious about this. And uh, you mentioned Scotland there, and I, I, if I'm right, and I hope I am right on this, they, they agreed a 4% uh, pay rise. What, what is the current thinking in relation to what is needed to settle this strike uh, for the RMT? Well, well, in Scotland, that was a deal struck by Aslef. We're making progress in Scotland. We haven't made a deal yet, but we've just signed a 7.1% deal in Wales. We've signed similar in Merseyside, 8% in Eurostar. That will give you the flavour. Mm. Uh, so we're in really troubling times because when the railway is supposed to be recovering from the health emergency and it's supposed to be expanding, I think, to be part of the green future and the economy, uh, more generally. The government is stripping two billion out of the operational expenditure of the railway. But what they're also doing is making sure that private companies' profits are protected. So on the one hand, they're ensuring companies can still make profits. Some of that can still go to tax havens. But workers, they have to have their terms and conditions and their jobs taken away uh, at a time when people ought to be coming out of the health emergency with a view to recover and get the economy growing. So it's a really troubling time for our people and they're deeply unhappy about that. Well, and just finally, Eddie, and I really do want to thank you for coming on this afternoon. Uh, you will have heard what Grant Shapps has said in relation to the strikes and you will have heard him say that real workers are risking striking themselves out of a job. I obviously want your reaction to that uh, comment. Well, we've all seen what happens when employers... Um, act against workers in this country. We saw it with P&O uh, when they sacked our members and they were dragged off the of ships by many balaclavas with handcuffs and all the rest of it. The whole country condemned that, rightly so, when it happened at P&O. Um, now that's happening to our members. Fire and rehire is what's being offered. And we've got the Minister for the Department for Transport now threatening our members with unemployment. Uh, I've got to be really clear about this. RMT members will not meekly join the dole queues in this country to protect the profits of companies who've been ripping this country off for years. And that's why we've got the highest fares in the country. I know commuters are going to find it difficult on days we take strike action. Uh, but this government, it seems, only cares about workers when they're commuting on days we take strike action. They're still workers on days when they're not commuting. Fares are going through the roof. The cost of living is going through the roof. In energy bills are soaring. Rents are going up. We need to make sure people have got a good standard of living. Uh, there's nothing political about this. We're just simply setting out to address an imbalance in power, and we want to make sure working people in this country have got, have got a square deal.